if you have asthma, you're two times more likely to develop sleep apnea, and people with sleep apnea are uh, much more likely to be asthmatic. There was research done sh with the Wisconsin Sleep Cohort showing that um, I think they had 1,278 individuals and they found that the people with asthma had a 41% chance of developing sleep apnea whereas the people without asthma only had a 29% chance of developing sleep apnea as they aged. It's been known for a long time that you know these two conditions are, are what they call comorbidities where one is associated with the other. And one of the interesting thing is that people with sleep apnea will tend to have worse asthma and the asthma will be less responsive to medication. So often the treatment of one improves if the other is treated and treating something that underlies both conditions will improve both conditions and breathing dysfunction could be one of the things that underlies both conditions. But it, 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 it seems that um, there's, bre there's a breathing control issue with both of them. Asthmatics are much more likely to have you know, disordered breathing control so that they're more likely to hyperventilate, to breathe inappropriately, to have kind of unstable daytime and it seems nighttime breathing as well. And people with sleep apnea also have not just a blocking off of the airway that stops them breathing, but a kind of a disturbance in breathing control where their breathing is more likely to become unstable and disturbed. So if daytime breathing is improved, um, then both conditions can improve. And another issue is mouth breathing. Mouth breathing makes asthma worse, mouth breathing makes sleep apnea worse. And then there are other comorbidities as well, like, you know, reflux will make um, asthma and sleep apnea worse, obesity will make asthma and sleep apnea worse.